In this lesson, I am going to show you how to design an app in the app called GamePress. So first of all, you're going to open up GamePress and you are going to create a new games in My Games. You'll be creating a new game in My Games. Here, you're going to tap Add Game and then title it and then allow others to edit should be on and you can just leave the genre and info blank you might want to choose an icon so you'll remember uh, where to look real fast to get to your game you can choose any of the icons that are here just to real quickly set it up I am going to choose the lightning and then create and now I have created a game in GamePress. I'm going to choose a side scroller for this one, but you could choose a top down depending on what game you're going to be doing. And the first thing I want to do is go up to overlays up at the top, see overlays, and go grid. This will tell you where you're working. And I want to suggest that you start in the rectangle at the bottom left. If you zoom out, it, it's like a piece of graph paper but the highlighted rectangle is where the automatic start screen is and so I'm going to show you a few tips on how to design a game. So first of all uh, you'll notice some of the assets down below and if you hit the folder you can access more assets or objects and these are just characters you can look at environment if you would like to look at some other types of ground that you want to put down. I'm going to choose one that's already up there and once you tap it you can tap the draw button on the left and then you can just swipe your finger across and you can draw ground. So another way that you can do this is drag it out but it's not going to line up perfectly. I'm going to undo that. To get it to line up you have to select um, the snap and now when you pull it out it'll snap to the grid it'll be a little bit more easy to line things up it'll snap a certain way if you would like to do that now what I'd like you to do is just learn how to put in like backgrounds and that's the first thing so if you tap on background up, up at the top and then you tap the middle screen here here's a bunch of sample backgrounds that you can use just for example to know how to do it. So I put in a background and put X and now that's going to be my background. And the next thing I want to show you is on the right hand side that's my background layer. If I tap a plus and I add a new layer uh, I can call it whatever I would like to. I'm going to call it layer <clears throat> 1 and so that's going to be above my background layer, anything I put in that layer. Anything in this layer will be in the background layer. And so if I go to layer 1, I cannot tap on and select anything in the background layer because I'm on the new layer. So this works well when you don't want to change anything in the background, you don't want to move it around, and you want to put everything over top of it. That's how you do that. So if you go back to background, you can see that this object in the right hand side, it'll show that this is not a background item. A background item looks like that. This is a block item. There's also physics items. So let's go ahead and add a character. This will make it more enjoyable. So I'm going to drag this little green spaceman to about right there. And then I'm going to tap the play button at the top will play the game and right now you cannot play the game because we have not programmed the character to do anything but this shows you what it looks like so I'm going to hit the back because like I said everything inside that square is what your screen will look like when it starts so what I'm going to do you can zoom it in, is program this character to move. So I'm going to tap on the character and you'll notice that the character looks like a background 
object, but that will change, that will be different. Hit behaviors, and in here is where you program. This is the code editor. So I am going to find under game logic, I'm going to make the character joystick controlled. So it automatically adds a joystick to the character that works. And then I'm going to pull jump with button in there. So to allow the character to jump. Now I'm going to hit play and see what happens. So now I can control my character and my character jumps. So that's about it. You can run off the screen as well. So the next thing I want to do is if I go back, I am going to add a new block. I'm going to set it right here. And instead of being just a um, block, I'm going to make it a physics object. And so if I hit play, now I can push it around because it's an object that has physics. It's not stuck there like the ground is. I can push it around. <clears throat> so it's really important that you know what type of object you have. If I change this back to like a background or a brick, let's do the wall object and see what happens. Now it's a wall object, I can't push it anymore. And if I make it a scenery object, part of the scenery, then I walk right through it. It's part of the scenery. So if you want to make it a physics object, that's that little spaceship. If you want it to be a block or terrain, it's the middle one. And if you want it part of the scenery, then it's the last one there. So now what I would like you to do is I would like you to select your character and go to screen and then let's adjust the start screen. I'm going to make it so that it's about like this. I guess you didn't have to select the character. And then hit the check mark. That's how it's going to start now. If I hit play, you'll see that it's zoomed out and it looks just like this. Now I want the screen to follow this character. So I'm going to go to screen and then screen follow and then hit play. And now when I run, the screen follows my character. And I'm going to hit back. So what I would like you to do is work on trying to make a design for your game.